Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to a new video. Today we're going to talk about a subject that I find really, really important. Boundaries. And before we move on with this video, I'm going to ask you to leave a like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, all the jazz, all, all those things that are important for YouTube. Now, what are boundaries and why is that important? Well, let me give you an example. Think about whenever you had to interact with an external API on your application. Let's go with Stripe or Twilio or any sort of API. When you interact with an external, with a third party API, you have a physical boundary between you and the API. You have a network call of distance. You're away from that. You, you cannot do a local call and get a response. You need to make a call through the network and get a response from them. Not only that, but you do not have control over what they respond. They have their specification. You might know what they respond with. You might have documentation, but you cannot control that. You can react to that. Your application can parse that, but you cannot control what it returns. That is an example of a boundary. Let's go with another example. Think about a microservices architecture. So you have an e-commerce application that has a warehouse service, it has a shipment service, all of that stuff. Those are separate services, and you're also at least a network call away. A service has to call the other, or maybe you're doing uh, an event-driven architecture, and those services do not even talk to each other. They all talk to a bus that relays that information. But the point is, you're split. You have well-defined boundaries. They do not overlap one with the other. And the reason I'm talking about this is because I'm going to talk about monoliths. I'm going to talk about, this is going to cover a little bit of a, um, not a distributed monolith, sorry, didn't do that, of a modular monolith. I'm going to talk a little bit about modularity. But the core of this video is really understanding, thinking, and reacting to boundaries. So what, what usually happens in a monolith? Well, you have everything in a single code base. You're often grouping things by type. So you have a directory with all your models. You have a directory with all your controllers and so on. And what happens is that maybe you don't have clear boundaries, like you don't have a separate folder for the shipping module, a separate folder for the warehouse module, and um, a separate folder for the product module. But you can think of them in your hand exists. You know that shipping is one thing and it has its own responsibilities. It does its own things. It has its own models. You know that the warehouse module is a completely other thing. It interacts with some third party providers, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you might know that. You might not have that separation in code, but you know it exists. So what happens is that you usually have mod modules. And when I say modules in this situation, I'm saying classes or small pieces of code calling one another. And it's all a tangled mass. Everything is linked together. You don't have good separation. And you're just calling stuff as you do. You're doing local calls throughout the application. Now, as you start to think about boundaries a little bit more actively, you can start to implement them in your code base. So the first thing that we do usually is you start splitting things by context. So while previously everything was together in the application, you had all your controllers together, all your models together, all your mailables together. And I'm using a lot of application as an example. Now you can split things by context. You can have a folder that has everything related to the warehouse module. You can have a folder that has everything related to the shipping module and so on. So now you're grouping things by context and you can access those contexts and see all it does in a glance. This is really helpful when your app's growing, when your project's growing, when your team's growing, and you don't want them to have to learn the full context of the application to do a small thing. If they want to work on the shipping module or even if you want to work on the shipping module, you're more constrained. You don't have a lot of information to deal with. You only have things that are related to the shipping module. Okay, so now we split things and we have the module separated, physically separated. They are on separate folders. We have that vision on the code base. However, we still have a problem. We are still invading those boundaries. So for example, when the warehouse module needs to do something within the shipping module, you still have code from the warehouse module going you know, in the center 
of the shipping module. You just you have those direct calls. Maybe you're calling a model, maybe you're calling a service, maybe you're using a mailable from there. So you you split things, you have them physically separated in your application, but they're still a little bit messy. You still have things going all over the place. So you have loosely defined boundaries. Like, yes, you've defined them in code, but you're invading them all the time. You don't have the clear separation. Think about microservices. Microservices are very, has very well-defined boundaries. They're separate apps. They have their own database, and you cannot invade them. If you're on the warehouse app, you cannot invade the shipping app. You, 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 don't, have, you don't have ways to do that because they're separate projects. It's not like you can, you know, change the code base. So you have the limitation and sometimes that gives you downsides and sometimes upsides. The upside is that since they're clearly separated, you cannot violate the contract, you cannot invade it, you have to respect it. Now, you can apply the same thing within a monolithic application. And here's how I like to think about it. You have these modules, right? They're, they're separated within the code base. And I like to think about, let, let's go with this example. Think about each module being a city. So you have the warehouse city, you have the shipping city, for example. And maybe the shipping, feature, the shipping city needs some information from the warehouse city. So it sends an emissary and the guy goes, hey, hey, um, I need this information. He just goes inside the city, breaks a gate and takes whatever he needs and comes back to the warehouse city. That's when you're violating, when you're invading um, in other contexts. However, what if this emissary could go to the border of the shipping city and say, hey, so uh, I'm in need of this specific shipment. Can you fetch it for me? And then someone from the shipment city would go and fetch the information and relate to it. Say, hey, here you go. This is the information that you need to go back to your city. What do I mean with this? Speaking about code, what I mean is an implementation from a module should not call another implementation from another module. It should call a contract. It should call an abstraction. So the caller should not be aware of the implementation it is calling. It should do that through an abstraction. Am I saying this is a hard role? No, I, I'm not saying that you should do this all the time. I know that in reality, that it's not gonna happen all the time, but you need to be aware of this when we're thinking about boundaries. If we're implementing boundaries, Sure, you can violate it sometimes, as long as you're violating it consciously. And what I mean with this, as long as you know what you're doing, why you're doing that violation, why you're invading the other contact space. And if you did that consciously, you can do less damage. You know what you're doing, the code was designed that way, it works. And that's how we usually do things, right? So we know this works. However, if you're aiming for uh, more strict boundaries, then you need to implement this kind of mechanism. So if, for example, the shipping feature, the shipping context needs to talk to the product context, it should do so through an abstraction, through a contract. For example, it might want to fetch some details about your product. For example, how much it weighs. Sure, you could just call the product model from within the shipping module. So just to be clear, I'm talking about the shipping module and the product model. So you could make a query to talk to database, to talk whether the product is able to fetch the information, but then you're just stepping on, on the product context, on the product city. Um, you shouldn't do that. Instead, you should talk to an abstraction that lives within the product city, within the product module, and ask for that information. The reason why this is important is because now you're separating things. You're not leaking information from a module to another. And for example, maybe you wanted to change how that information is fetched. Maybe for some items, it is fetched from the database. For some items from a partner, it is fetched from an API call. And the shipping module shouldn't really be aware of this. It shouldn't be making this decision. It should be deferring it to the product module. So when it calls the product module and says, hey, give me information about this. If you have a well-established contract that gives you what you're asking for, what you can ask in a message, and what you're getting, the return type, then that shipping module does not really need to know what's happening behind the scenes. All he knows is the information he has to send and what it is getting back. And then the product module can either call an API, call the database, 
whatever. It doesn't really matter. And now you might be thinking, okay, this makes sense. It seems a little bit complicated and it, there is some overhead. Obviously, I don't do this for everything. It really depends on the complexity. And it's all about using the right tool for the right problem. And you don't, you, you don't always face this specific problem in this complexity, but it's a good tool to have in your belt. Now you might be thinking, okay, what about Eloquent? So if the product module is returning an eloquent object. Let's say it's returning a product model. If it's from the database, then it could just access it from the shipping module. And if it's from an API, how can we have a single return type? And that's a problem that you're going to probably face. If you're using eloquent, it has certain limitations, um, especially in this scenario, especially when you want to avoid coupling. And in those cases, you can either just accept it and use it as it is. Or you can, for example, return a DTO. For example, you don't have to return the product model. You can return a product DTO that's hydrated within the product boundaries. So the product service is gonna either fetch it from an API or fetch it from a database and hydrate another class, another DTO, a data transfer object, an object that only has information within it. And the reason this is beneficial in this scenario is that now you have a single return type for all those operations, whether it's calling it from an API or it's fashion data from the database, it's still going to give you a product DTO. So you have standardized the response from that server. And now all the other modules can ask the product module, hey, give me this product, give me information about this product, and expect to receive one single thing, whether it was fetched from an API or from the database, it doesn't really matter. It's not, not the problem. Um, the shipping module doesn't really care how a product is fetched. It doesn't matter. All it matters to it is that it receives a certain type of object, object sorry, <laughs> I'm talking a lot, a certain type of object that is defined within a contract. It is responsibility of the owner of the contract, in this case, the product module, to figure out how to retrieve that. And again, in some cases, you're probably gonna break some boundaries. You're gonna use Eloquent. It's fine, you, you, you do you. You know your project's complexity. You know what you need to do. I, I can't say whether it is the right choice or the wrong choice. I can say that I usually do. I do leak information from modules. I do invade other contexts, but I do that very consciously. I know what I'm doing. I'm thinking about those boundaries. Even when I'm breaking them, even when I'm invading modules, leaking information, I'm thinking about, and that already makes the design of the code a little bit better. Because even when you're using something like Eloquent, which you love, I love Eloquent to death, but I know that it has some limitations and I know that when you use it to its full extent, you're, you're accepting to have some coupling and I'm fine with it. But I also do that very, uh, I would say, aware of things, very aware of boundaries and trying to design the code in such a way that I, that I invade the less boundaries as possible. So that I try not to leak, that I try to leak the less information I can and that I can maintain these modules somewhat separated. So. I hope that video made sense. It is a very extensive subject. Um, and to go in depth with it, it would require quite a lot of, of time to talk about this. Maybe I can do a video about this, showing some code and how I would approach this and the, the several different ways that I would approach cross-boundary communication. Hopefully this made sense and hopefully it helped somehow. So talking a lot gives me acid, acid reflux, acid reflux, Jesus, this is becoming really hard. But thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.